Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Sadly, we are losing all of our friends off the internet left and right, D'Anthony. Uh, actually, not left, uh, just right, it seems, including uh, our old pal, the Marine Rapper, and uh, Topher. Uh, welcome to the show, gentlemen. Um, man, you guys have been in the news a lot over the last week. Uh, tell everybody what happened to your, your song. It was number one in the world, and then it just disappeared. Yeah, so we got banned in the USA. Uh, we got the two live crew treatment. Um, and for no reason and no explanation at all. Now, I mean, this coming from the distributor themselves, they could not provide any explanation. But what's funny is the song was blazing the charts. We are right now number three in rap digital song sales, number four R&B and hip hop digital song sales, and number 36 all genres. So, so that means we're with Taylor Swift, Smokey Robinson, and Drake. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, look, I saw how got, how high you guys were climbing because I uh, I obviously follow you, Marine Rapper. Um, yeah. We worked together on Range 15. Um, the craziest part about it to me is like knowing you personally, you are truly one of the, the nicest people on the face of the earth. Like, of all the people on earth that could get censored. I understand <laughs> two live crew back in the day getting banned, but like the Marine Rapper, are you... Like, are we there? Are we there as a fucking country now? We're banning the Marine rapper? It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And like, it's crazy. Like even Instagram uh, censored me from there as well. And and I go live every day for uh, suicide prevention. So it's just crazy. It's just like, <laughs> if, if, you, if you come out and you say you're conservative or you're, if, or you're with the right, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear your voice. That's why we're like, yo, like, they say elevate black voices. I'm like, which ones? Not yeah. our... Yeah. yeah, it's like, funny. I don't remember uh, since November 3rd when the election happened. I, I can't recall any politician on the left uttering the phrase Black Lives Matter once um, no, Dad. in public. Nope. And, uh, I, I worked in politics back in the day, and one of my buddies, he was running for statewide office, and he was a black firefighter, as a matter of fact. And he was like trying to tell people, all the white people in Wisconsin, basically, uh, that are on the liberal side of politics, like, hey, the impression is that you guys only show up once every four years when it's election time and then you fuck off and never talk to these people again until it's time for their vote again. That's what it seems like and because that's what it is. And he's like, maybe don't do that. And they're like, yeah, it's a good idea. And they did it again and again and again. Four more times since then. So it's like, whatever, man. It's <laughs> like, there, if there's no real standard there, then what you're saying is bullshit. All right? Don't, don't, get, don't try to get me to buy into your stuff unless you fucking agree with it. Like Newsom. Right. Yeah, don't tell me. Man. Don't tell me there's a goddamn global pandemic and we're all going to fucking die. And then you're out, you know, eating a fifteen hundred dollar dinner. Yeah. With all right. the public health officials from California. No one's wearing a mask. You know what I mean? So get fucked, dude. Yeah. And exactly. is, there, is there a part of you guys where it's like, again, with the, the Black Lives Matter movement, it's like, OK, well, which lives? Because it's not yours for some reason. Nope. And it's like. Uh, tell everybody the name of the song and where they can actually buy it. And I'm going to keep repeating this throughout the show so that way yeah. people can find it because this is fucking crazy, man. Yeah, it is crazy. So the song is called The Patriot. So you search it under Topher, The Patriot, featuring the Marine rapper. Um, you can find it only on my website now at themarinerapper.com because they pulled it from every single digital streaming platform, which makes no sense because you look at Billboard, we're charting on three charts. And if, if you know how the charts work, you cannot chart if you don't sell. So we were set, we were outselling every hip hop artist in the world. And with no label, no budget, we didn't put any money into the ads at all. So everybody needs to check out Topher, the Patriot featuring the Marine Rapper. All right, so go to themarinerapper.com, uh, support these guys and buy their song to keep them on the charts. Um, what made you write it to begin with? Because a, a lot of people don't know the backstory to that song, Topher. Yeah, so um, I was at the rally that went down December 12th, um, Women March for Trump or Women for America First. Mm -hmm. um, we was out there and, you know, of course, I've been a strong Trump supporter um, throughout his uh, presidency. And we was there. A lot of people was playing, you know, Bryson Gray and Forgiato Blow, uh, their mm -hmm. music. And I was like, yo, I make music, too. So, like, I don't want to, I don't like my music. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> so I was like, that means I got to get in the studio and create something magical. 
And uh, I saw this video on TikTok uh, by uh, Natty Dread is her TikTok name and a wonderful singer. She's from Scotland. And I asked her for permission to use and sample her vocals. She agreed. And I got my pr producer, Killer Vic, who's also a veteran as well. And he produced the track. And next thing I know, I wrote it and added the Marine rapper and it's history. People have dubbed it the 2021 anthem for Patriots across, across the world. So uh, we are proud to have that title. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things where, you know, once DistroKid, because I, I saw your Instagram post, once DistroKid drops it, um, without, with, without explanation in particular, you're kind of fucked unless you're going to sell it on your own. Um, Matt, Matt and I and Jared and, and Rocco, like, you know, we've made comedy songs over the years, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Um, and we've always gone through DistroKid. DistroKid does not give a shit about anything but money. When I read that post that they, you know, the, the email that they had sent you, clearly that had come from somebody way higher up because it had nothing to do with yeah. DistroKid. Yeah, yep. exactly. So it wasn't DistroKid's fault. It, it was definitely they just care about the transaction. It was somebody higher. Yeah, and who? But who do you think that was? Because again, knowing DistroKid all these years, and uh, uh, there's another uh, web service we use. They literally only give a fuck about money. Um, they don't care what you put out. Uh, to be honest with you, so who do you think it was that was uh, uh, above DistroKid? Was it somebody in the government? That, that had this song pulled? Was it somebody from social media? Like, I, I just can't imagine who that would be. Oof. Um, I'm going to put it like this. A lot of people want to say that it was probably copyright. Then there would have been an easy email saying that, you know, um, it was copyright issues. And, and that wasn't the email. Um, they also have some safeguards. And when you do upload stuff, they have a copyright to it that you cannot upload that content. But it was up there for weeks before it was taken down by Spotify. I believe that they're trying to tie this to artists like Ariel Pink and Tommy Vex, who also have been counseled and dropped for the labels for the support for Trump. And when we was at the rally performing the song, The Patriot for the Veterans for Trump Coalition, after we got off stage and we headed back to the Airbnb, the song was already ripped from Spotify. It just so happened to be the same day. Wow. So you tell me if it's a coincidence or not. Yeah, I, look, it definitely isn't. None of this shit I, is a coincidence, man. Yeah, and no. I've had copyright issues before. They tell you <clears throat> right away, hey, man, it's a copyright exactly. issue. Either pull this or pull that. Like, from doing all these movies all these years, like, it is a simple email. You, you know, you, hey, easy mistake. We'll change it. And then they let you post it again. Did you guys try to repost the song again? No, we didn't. Because in that letter, mm -hmm. she explicitly said, if we try to upload the same song again, they will pull down all of our music and all of our songs and albums that and, we've ever done. And ban us from distro. And ban us <laughs> in general. Sweet. God damn Sweet. it, man. Uh, I, I've, you know, before we did, I've, I've heard the song a lot now just from, you know, you posting it, other people posting it, and then, you know, owning it myself, listening to it and shit. And I, and I, I look through the lyrics that you guys write. And one of the overarching themes is that it's something that, that I personally talk about on this show a lot, which is uh, if you want to, I, I guess one of the, one of the ideas is encapsulated in this phrase. If you want to, if you want to thank me for my service, make this country worth fucking fighting for. Right. Like, I don't want to, yeah. I, I fought there. I don't want to have to come back here and have to fight again, man. This is, yep. this is ridiculous. Um, and in the lyrics, you guys call out everybody basically, right. From, uh, I'm looking out for you guys that are, you know, stepping up your game, getting educated, being a father to your children. I'm looking up for uh, uh, freedom in general. I, I don't like division. I mean, it, there's, there, there couldn't possibly be anything you take out of this goddamn song that could offend anybody unless they are against those principles, right? I mean, what, what the fuck are they talking about here? Yeah, because if you look at, I looked at the um, the reason why I don't support the organization of Bill, B, the reason why I don't support the organization of BLM because mm. I looked at what I researched it, and they don't support the traditional family. Right. So of course, if you have leftist ideals, you're not going to support this song because we're talking about fathers being fathers. We're talking about brothers being doctors. We're talking about sisters going to get your own money and work in the workplace. So we're talking about a whole bunch of different things that the left side does not like. But we were still saying, hey, we still want to unite. We still want to come together, white, black, red, brown. We don't care what you look like. But then they still did that. And so that's why it's so ridiculous because we were beating out major labels with no budget. And they didn't like that because we were beating out WAP. 
and they yeah. hated that we were beating WAP. We, we kept beating it over and over again. Like, yeah, it's funny. Pun intended. I, I, wonder, <laughs> I wonder if uh, if if uh, the Ayatollah and Iran released a song if it would get banned or not. Well, he's still on Twitter. Yeah, he's still on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, By the way, all the uh, well, I mean, I guess we can cover this next week on the fake news, but. And, again, and I'm not, I personally am not a Trump apologist at all. I think uh, that his equivocation day of was stupid. I don't think it incited anything, but I think it was stupid. But now we're seeing that the FBI had information days, if not weeks in advance, that all this shit was going to happen. Yeah. They didn't let anybody know so the city could prepare. They also allowed fucking all this craziness to happen over the next three days post without putting out a statement saying, hey, we've been tracking on this. Uh, so what happened was... Uh, uh, Trump gets banned. This coordinated attack by social media companies and, and Amazon to get rid of Parler. Uh, and then uh, what, what do we expect to see next, right? Now there's now the FBI, instead of doing its job in the fucking first place, is warning people like, oh, there's going to be a violent uprising. Like, yeah, and if there is, you fucking caused it, guy, by allowing disinformation and not doing your fucking job. So good yeah, luck. Know. Yeah, and, I, you know, one of the other things that's, that's super frustrating about this is knowing you personally. Um, you know, I got to know you during the making of Range 15. You obviously did the, the closing credits song for our movie. You work your fucking ass off. Artists like you work your ass off for a shot to have a song this big. You finally did it. You were at the top of the charts. And then, hey, man, fuck you. Fuck all your hard work for everything you've been doing for the last 10 years. Uh, and then we're just going to take it down and sell it on your own. But but like you said, WAP is was, is up there. I mean, I guess if you put you know, fad. If you if you had fat ass dick, you know, just made a, a song <laughs> called Fad, that would be fine. Just don't sing about the country anymore, I guess. Or you can probably it, find a song about murdering police officers. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you can you can talk about killing cops. You know, that could be a hit song. And I'm just, but you cannot support Law and Order and things like that. And, and we also have the note. I don't know if you noticed that song has no profanity. None. Yeah. No, yeah, it's I, basically I, the uh, Napoleon Dynamite of, of hip hop songs. Yeah, but <laughs> which is great, though, because I, I will say this. Look, dude, I listen to fucking aggressive rap. <clears throat> um, you know, I have for years and years and years with a song like this. I thought you guys even took the right route where if you were saying fuck every other word in a song like this, people wouldn't take the messaging seriously. Um, and that's also what I enjoyed about the song. And it was like, shit, because they can't even ding you for that. You know what I'm saying? You didn't say fuck off to anyone. Like it, it was a genuine song about the country, everything that, that, that is going on out there. And then you get ripped. Uh, what happens next for you guys? Because, I mean, look, you definitely want to capitalize on how hot you are now. Um, are you guys back in the studio recording something else? Yeah, uh, so we are in L.A. right now actually shooting the music video for The Patriot. So that's going to be um, coming here within a week or so. Um, and on top of that, while we are you know, together, we got to do a song um, to respond to the, uh, being banned in the USA. So uh, we, we have a lot of stuff in works where we're talking to people as far as how we want to move forward mm -hmm. uh, legally. Um, but also we're going to uh, continue to push things uh, independently on the website um, continue to, uh, you know, monetize ourselves and build our own, you know, take back some of that ownership. Yeah. Because if they're willing to ban this song without any explanation, what's going to stop them from doing future songs? Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure we go ahead and set up a, a, a stop gate for that and, and, and um, contingency plan. So that's kind of what we're working with right now. We, we, and then also the reason why we're fighting so hard with this song is because it's like a freedom of speech thing. And so it don't matter if you're a rapper a rock star, a podcaster, like we know how vocal we are. So we have to use our voice and we're doing the the battle for everybody. We're not just doing it for rappers or musicians or independent artists. We're doing it for everybody because it's like you take one freedom. What What's next? You know what I mean? What's next? So that's why that's why we're so adamant about fighting this thing, you know, <clears throat> as far as you take it. Um, with the video itself, because that song obviously will be in the video. Is YouTube going to have an issue with it? Do you think they'll pull the song down? Well, we have the lyric video, which has almost 400,000 views mm -hmm. uh, within less, less than a month. And we have not seen one copyright. Because usually, even if it's copyrighted. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, dude. YouTube catches it before yeah. anybody catches that. They shit. catch it right. in anybody. 10 like, seconds. Yeah. 10 seconds. We, every yeah. time 
Shit, we did a show where I held up. Uh, you, you hummed something one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not it's even not kidding. Serious. Not even kidding. I did the uh, <laughs> McDonald's theme song. Da 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 da. Um, oh and wow. They, wow! Yeah, yeah, and they dinged that, and I was like, I mean, look, do I have the voice of an angel? Yes. Is it recording quality? Of course it is. But <laughs> I did uh, not sing the ba da ba 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 song. And then there was another one where we were doing a show, and uh, it was. Uh, Shit, who's getting, uh, fuck, who's getting out of, I I can say the word, but I can't say the word. Uh, uh, Bobby Schmurder. It was a Bobby Schmurder song. It was called oh, yeah. Hot, and then you can fill in the yeah. rest of it, obviously. Yeah, yeah don't, don't say that word. No, <laughs> definitely not going to, but I held it, I held it, uh, we were playing it to, it was like a, hey man, this is what the team was coming out to for a, a yeah. football game on the sports yeah. show. <clears throat> Six oh, yeah, seconds yeah, yeah. into the microphone through my phone, YouTube flagged it within 15 seconds, yeah. and we're like, copyright issue. Bobby Schmurder owns it, so yeah, yeah, wow. it, yeah, it's it, stupid. If if you yeah, if there was a copyright issue, you guys would have gotten dinged. Oh yeah, within and twenty it, seconds, and it, yeah. it, the video would be ripped. It's so. always if you ever have any questions about it, it's always good to upload it to YouTube first and see what happens. To be honest, exactly. yeah, even if you save it as a draft, yeah. they will tell you if yeah. it's a copyright. So also, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty good about it. I don't think you guys are allowed to say the N word anymore either, because according to Joe Biden. Yeah, right. I, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not assuming who you voted for, but based on what you said so far, I'm pretty sure I could tell yeah. that means. Yeah, we both voted for Trump. Like, yeah. So, yeah. so is there like an official process with the Democratic Party where you have to surrender a card or how does that work? <laughs> yeah, that's why you saw my, di you saw my disc that uh, Trump shared, yeah. like I, I did Biden and he shared it. But yeah, it's a black card and I'm trying to figure out where I send it to. Uh, Biden hasn't responded where yeah. uh, an well, address yet. I'm going to send it somewhere, wherever that's Well, at, he's so. asleep. Is he alive? Yeah, probably somewhere. He's he's sitting in a fucking lazy boy with a shawl over his lap right now. <laughs> yeah, and he's probably holding a stuffed animal because that's what you do when you have dementia, right? Yeah, he's got a he's got a jar of Werthers in his lap. I, I talked to Baker this morning, and he was his brother is a fucking uh, a, like a legit doctor, like a real doctor, like mm -hmm. neuro neurosurgeon, yeah, yeah. spinal yeah. surgeon kind of guy. And he's like, yeah, he's got vascular dementia. It's obvious. I'm yeah. Like, All right, cool. So we're just gonna do this then, right? Yeah. It's, yeah exactly. it, hey, it's Fuck done. Yeah, brother. Hey, let's do it. It's peak 2021. I'll tell you what, I've been preparing for this my entire life. Uh, <laughs> I don't need anybody around me ever. No. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've got plenty of weapons and training and I, I enjoy eating game. So yeah. it's like, pff, what the fuck are we going to do here? You're, you good, I mean? you're good to go. You're I'm going to get, go. you know, uh, the golden compass, how the, the armored bears had like that big helmet with the fucking spikes on it or whatever. I'm going to get those for my two little Boston Terriers and we're going to go terrorize the neighborhood. Yeah. Can you imagine me coming through your neighborhood fucking shirtless with lamb of God playing in the background and two Boston Terriers with like fucking skull head uh, rigs on? <laughs> God damn it. Man. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Uh, speaking of, of Trump retweeting your video, what was that day like, by the way? That was that was wild. I didn't even I didn't even know what to do. I was just like speechless. And uh, I think the girl I was with, she was just like, hey, yo, you know, you're like on Trump's like his page. And I was just like, what? And she's like, yo, you don't even need to you don't even need to respond to anybody. Trump tweeted you. You the man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trump basically said I'm the most savage rapper. Like, that's what he said. Like. Well, there was a lot of you guys. Uh, you got laid that day, right? Just, just checking oh, yeah, with that yeah. girl. Like, <laughs> call me, call me Donald, bitch. Call me Donald. And you just slap the fuck out of her. Were you wearing like a, 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 a I guess, a bad wig? I mean, yeah. I don't want to be a dick or nothing, but come on. <laughs> this hair sucks, man. That's great. Uh, that's yeah, that is really funny. Um, uh, for for you guys personally now, like, uh, what do you what do you hope comes out of this next term with Biden and all that shit? I would love to see big tech broken up. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I have I have a feeling this is only going to get worse. How are you guys preparing for that? We're like like how Topher said, we are preparing by just accruing revenue and investing and being able to be in positions to where we can create our own applications and our own platforms. And I feel like a lot of uh, conservatives are migrating away from a lot of these. Uh, liberal dominant applications. Uh, I know a lot of friends are like, I'm leaving Instagram, I'm leaving all, all the social media mm -hmm. behind specifically because they feel like it's being biased and freedom of speech is being tainted right now. So we're just investing, we're being smart with our money, we're saving. So if we need to do something uh, bigger on a bigger platform, we'll be able to do that financially. That's great, man, because uh, you, you have to at this point. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff in the works, by the way. Uh, we can talk offline about it, but it's, web hosting using um, 
Ethereum's blockchain technology, which none of these tech companies are ever going to be able to get near unless they develop software better than the NSA has to crack encryption. Yeah. Uh, that's one of them. Another thing is, you know, there's there's other options out there. Rumble. Yeah, there's Parler, a, there, there's a Gab. bunch of them. I mean, shit, we had to, you know, we had Alex Jones on uh, right after he came back from the, the, the Capitol thing. And we had to move that episode to Patreon because, you know, anything with him immediately yeah. gets shut down on there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we had, to, we had to start a Drinking Bros podcast, Patreon, unfortunately. <laughs> we said we would never go behind a paywall. And we're, we're still not going to. But it's one of those things with controversial people where we want to be able to, to have the freedom to interview whoever we want. So some of those controversial shows will go there on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that is, is, is the future of uh, not only music, but uh, art <coughs> itself. If you disagree yeah. with the media and everything that's going on, you're going to have to have your own website. You're going to have to have your own app, things like that. Yeah, and it is what it is, right? I mean, is it, if you think about it from the perspective of the consumer, I mean, when we decided fucking years ago, I don't even know how long at this point, that we would never go behind a paywall, and we won't, we still won't for our, the majority of our content, but when we decided that, there was no existential threat to freedom of speech as so far as we could tell. I mean, obviously, you, there's always this slow creep of, of uh, communism whenever you allow certain types of ideology to penetrate your fucking national discourse. But, you know, it didn't seem real until just honestly a couple of weeks ago, frankly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, now I, what, what we're trying to do in that scenario is put the, the decision back in the hands of the consumer, right? So uh, the only color that really matters in this country is green. I'll tell you that much right now. Yep. Uh, yep. All these ideologies and all this bullshit, all these fucking problems, are linked to poverty, income inequality, and then they're usually solved by investment, right? Mm-hmm. That's usually, that's, that is oh, not usually, that is 100% of the time how it works. Um, and when you don't have that element, for example, the Civil Rights Act, and then no financial investment in true education and entrepreneurship for black America, we are in the same spot today that we were 50 years ago, right? Yeah. It's fucking stupid. Uh, it's a pretty easy math equation to solve. Now, when we put that back in the hands of the consumers. And when I say consumers, I mean fans. Now you can vote with your money mm-hmm. mm. where you want to fucking, mm. what kind of country you want to live in. And Drinking Bros is not a conservative show. He is. Jared's kind of libertarian. I am whatever the fuck I am, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're and, in the middle. And uh, <clears throat> you have the opportunity to, to cancel Twitter. Like, get off of that fucking platform because all their money is based on subscribers and then how much traffic they get, mm-hmm. right? Leave, yep. leave, take their money away. They've already lost 19 points and they're down another point again today. Yeah, and uh, I know Facebook has lost, I think, 63 million since it started. Bill, billion. Oh, billion, I'm sorry, billion. billion yeah, uh, billion, yeah. yeah, with a B, so. Yeah, it's the, it, this is the largest, uh, the largest uh, like digital protest in, in American history. The largest before this was Bank of America during Occupy Wall Street in mm-hmm. 2012, I think in October, and they lost something like 51 billion over the course of a weekend. Yeah. Facebook, obviously there's some inflation there, but Facebook has uh, destroyed that record. Yeah. And it's uh, only going to get worse. They're going to lose more. I, I predicted at the outset that Twitter would lose about 18 to 19 points, and they're already at 19. So it may go even higher. What I told you the day before, <laughs> the day before they fucking kicked Trump off was to, if you could find a way in the market to short Twitter stock, right, right. do that and then give me 5% of it. Well, the ironic thing about it is they did it on Friday night. And I know this trick in Hollywood. If, if a fucking celebrity goes through any form of crisis or whatever, and you have to release a statement, a divorce. Uh, They've you know, been doing it in the, in the, the news all, for years. Yes, the if Army you, Hammer yeah. thing. You always release it at like <laughs> yeah. 6 o'clock on a Friday night. That way, everybody's you know up in arms or whatever. They forget about it over the weekend because they're with their family or doing whatever the fuck it is. I feel do. kind of bad for Army Hammer, though, because... If somebody were to repeat, if any one woman that I've ever dated were to repeat all the fucked up shit I said to her in private, <laughs> it might look, without context, it might look a little bad. Now, luckily, there's hundreds of hours of me saying that shit and people can tell it's a joke. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, and Army Hammer looks like uh, he could have, he could be in the remake of American Psycho, let's be real. Yes. Like, he's got that look. Yeah, yeah. But still, man, I feel bad for the guy. Yeah, so do I. Uh, he I, wasn't like knocking her out and shit, right? He was just saying, hey, I want to cut some of your body parts off and, and, and have he, them and for dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted, he wanted a barbecue. That's not technically a crime, by the way. No, it's not, but it's uh, certainly frowned upon. Eh, whatever. Um, has anybody reached out to you guys to work with you? So right now, um, Tummy Vexed, who also got dropped from um, his band, Bad Wolves, uh, he has reached out. We're actually working on a song. He's in the studio today uh, for a song they're going to do as a collab. Um, 
I haven't had anybody else as artists reached out, but at the same time, you know, it's still kind of fresh and new and no one's going to fight for your fight more than you. Sure. So we'll continue to push and, and talk about it and raise noise. We had one independent Red Liberty Media reached out and did an article about it. So if you want to go read the article um, at redliberty.com where you can see the screenshots from my me trying to reach out to Spotify to get an answer. No stores have responded to my emails as to why. And my distributor, as you saw, gave us no answers. Right. So at this point, we have to assume that it was discriminatory how they mm. um, kicked us off their platforms. Yeah, no, I, I guess you're uh, pursuing legal action now. It might be a good idea for you guys to contact uh, Parler directly and see what they're because they're filing against Amazon right now. And that'll be part of... Uh, what you guys too uh, have to do as well, because obviously Amazon's one of the big music distributors now as well. Um, yeah, because I, I, look, I've I've had my own issues with Amazon and twice now. Yeah, twice. I'm going through it now with the audiobook where it's magically being held, but uh, for a content review, um, it, it's it's one of those things where because the first time it happened to me personally, you start calling these people and you you, you know you're trying to get an answer. First of all, you got to go through Indonesia or the, or the Philippines or whoever those the, the fake people are, and then you get yeah. to kind of realer people and then you go up this chain where it is never ending you will never talk to the people you actually need to talk to nothing will change with your content they're not going to magically put it back in stores because you called and said something like it's going to have to be sadly a lawyer that reaches out to these companies and say hey man i want a clear-cut definition of why you pulled my content from your platform and what rules i violated um and once you get that i think that'll be a uh, a good stepping stone for the rest of your music because now I'm worried about the rest of your shit. Like, you know, once, once your name is out there and they've already ripped shit yeah. down, now they're going to start combing through everything you do. Um, again, it's, it's happened to me. And when you say they, you mean some, uh, 24 year old woke fucking, uh, uh, recent college graduate whose job it is to be offended professionally. Yeah. I mean, it's Jesus, exactly could what this, it is. Uh, how did we, I've seen this meme before, but it still sticks with me. How did a generation raised on family guy and South park turn out to be such fucking bitches? Holy shit. Dude. <laughs> is, I've never seen. And if you look at uh, even family guy, cause Seth MacFarlane is liberal as shit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even that show they're getting worse as time goes on. Like season 14 is one of the most fucked up thing. And that's right at the beginning of the me too era. Mm -hmm. Uh, Man, it's bad. It's like super dark stuff. He goes hard. Yeah, man. and I don't. I don't know. I've I don't worked with it. him. He he goes fucking hard, and it's it's his office is like a fraternity house. It's great. Um, but yeah, I, we we need more people out there like you guys. Um, shit, man, I, it's so frustrating because it's like, dude, I know, I know what you're going through, and again, I know you as a person. And you've been working yeah. your fucking ass off, dude. I mean, you've done everything under the sun. And then finally, <laughs> holy shit. Um, <laughs> yeah. God, because you could not be a nicer human being in person. And it just sucks, man. And remember, like, you you were there when I first started. Remember, I did a little freestyle rap for you in person yeah. and everything. Like, you know, I was grinding in Hollywood hard as I could. And so, like, you know, I was at the bottom, worked, all, climbed all the way to the top. We're all excited and we're like, we were actually also projected to take number one next week. So we feel like that has another thing to do with it because our sales were crazy. <laughs> you're the fastest selling hip hop song in the last month. So your, your supposition is that uh, record companies that are involved with the other t songs top of the charts right now probably made calls. I mean, it wouldn't surprise 100%. me, frankly. Wouldn't yeah. surprise 100%. me. A bunch of people have, have suffered that way. Uh, you mentioned uh, Forgiato Blow earlier. He got banned fucking before the uh, election even happened, right? Uh, yeah, he got yeah he got banned after the election. I think. Oh, it was after. Oh. It. He he's a little more aggressive than you guys are. Uh, yeah, 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 a lot, a little, lot more, yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot yeah. more aggressive. But I mean, again, what exactly constitutes one's ability to to express themselves freely? I mean, we we do have two hundred and forty three years of goddamn case law in this shit now. Yeah, you know what I mean. So at Brandenburg v. Ohio, for example, I, I mentioned it on the show before, but it was a case uh, about uh, the state of Ohio trying to charge a KKK leader with incitement to violence, right? Mm -hmm. And what the decision ultimately was, was whomever is charged with that has to be making a specific threat against a specific group of people. Like I, and and, and it has to, there has to be a third party involved, even if it's a group. So I want you people whomever they are, my, my fans or whatever the fuck, to go do 
this thing to this person. That's what it requires to do that. Now, I, Forgiato never made any references to violence ever that I can tell. I mean, I've listened to his shit for a couple of years now. I've never heard him say anything like that. So what is it exactly? You can't, you can't silence people because you disagree with what they say. That is the founding principle of this country. And now it seems a matter of course that the, the, the new government that's being sworn in in a couple of days is, is apparently intent on that. So what does that mean to you? I mean, you, they, I am not in any way an advocate for violence to restore the balance here, but I'm not surprised by it either, frankly. And I don't think anybody should be. Yeah, when, where do we go as a country from here in, in, in your guys' eyes here? Um, you know, because a lot of people in the media seem to think this is magically going to get better overnight after the inauguration. Uh, the the five-day ceremony that they just pitched yesterday, I don't know if you heard about this, they're going to do a five-day ceremony for the inauguration next week, starting on Saturday nights. A five-day ceremony? They were trying to talk Correct. all this shit about Trump having his little military parade for Veterans Day or whatever the fuck, yes. and now this? Like, they're going to have a five-day inauguration? Are you fucking kidding I'm me? I'm dead serious, man. I'll, I'll, I'll read it in a second, but... Uh, Hi. Uh, uh, I, I, as a, it, they said unity and healing. Um, you and I, T-Y, that's a good song. Yeah, it Remember is. That song? It's, it's great, and uh, they never pulled it down from the charts either. I think I'm too old. I yeah. should not have said that. Uh, you and I, T-Y? Yeah, I shouldn't have, because that means that was definitely Yeah, I'm alive. super young, yeah. so I don't, I don't know what that is. But uh, how, do you think the country's going to change next week or uh, after this, you know, after he gets in? It's going to change Will the magazines. media ease up on guys like us and, and uh, platforms? You know? Oh, yeah, Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo are definitely going to calm down, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Get the no. fuck out of here, man. I did see a little bit of easing up. I remember... Like when uh, leading up to the election, I remember that a lot of conservatives were being silenced and they were, weren't put in these threads on Instagram. Cause I was like, why aren't my posts not coming through to people? Cause people were like, I haven't seen you in this whole time leading up to the election. And then I realized they're putting put money in to silence a whole bunch of these voices and elevate more liberal voices on social media. And that's what, that's what happened. They were saying, vote, 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 vote. Because I remember on Instagram, I was like, anything I did, it was like, don't forget to vote. And I'm like, what? what's going on here? But um, that's what they were doing. They were silencing a whole bunch of people and just catering to another group of people. So it was irritating. But I think that it'll let up a little bit as uh, far as like a couple of bit, you know, it'll, it'll let us say a little bit more. But like, I don't think it'll <clears throat> it'll be anything in our favor at all. Right. What other media outlets have you guys talked to? Have you guys hooked up with James Klug or anybody that's down there in Southern California? I don't know if he's there right now. He's probably out in D.C. still. But there's a lot of there's a lot of independent yeah. uh, uh, right leaning. And then, of course, independent leaning uh, journalists out there in California these days. I need to reach out to James. Um, mm -hmm. We're mutual fans on Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, I, I forget him again. I, mean, I'm, I forget him in Cali. You know, I'm from <laughs> Mississippi, uh, so I don't think you know where people are located all the time. But uh, we're probably gonna reach out to James. I did reach out to him previously about the song when it was charting. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, conservative media, does anyone want to talk about the song? You know, destroying the charts right now. And then he said he's gonna reach out to some people. But now I guess we need to reach out and say, hey, do you want to talk about the song being removed? Right. Because it's destroying the charts. Right. Um, but like I said, the story is only going to get bigger because of what they're doing to us. And, you know, we're going to continue to talk about it. Like, uh, you know, Raymond said earlier, man, is, is we have to do this not just for us, but for the comedians, for everybody else out there that's facing the same scrutiny. Um, we have to protect this because once you take the First Amendment, it's only the second next. Yeah. And the, th the thing is, is comedians and musicians have always been at the forefront of free speech. Yeah. So that's why it's very important. Like, you know, if not, you know, Dan wouldn't be able to say anything. You know? No, nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, look, of us would. I've got that second amendment, amendment on me all the time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want. Oh, uh, you got that? You got that thing on you? Yeah, I love <laughs> that's one of my favorite memes is I got that thing on me. But it, it's like just random <laughs> objects like a taco or some shit. That's my favorite. Like right now. That's one of my favorite memes. I love that. So if you find any funny ones out there, send them to me. Yeah, uh, this uh, <clears throat> oof, boy, I'll, I'll give you the heads up here on this. The five day celebration for Joe Biden. Oh, my God. Um, the events <laughs> uh, will look different than years past, obviously. Um, Oh boy, God! Damn. I mean, they're, they're is it going to be like the really... fucking? It's going to be like the opening ceremony for the Olympics or some shit. Yeah, I... like Joe, and then they wheelchair his ass out there, and he's just like drooling out of one side of his mouth. 
Uh, oh, what are they going to They're going to inject him full of fucking Toradol and amphetamine so he can stand up for five seconds and say something. Oh, no, they're not, because they're, they're having celebrities do it for him. So uh, Tom Hanks will be hosting. Do they not see how this is the goddamn <laughs> Hunger Games? Did they honestly not see this? Like, for real, I'm not even kidding about that. I know Hunger Games is a, is a silly reference, but they didn't, did, do they not understand that they are isolating power into one area into a small community that does not represent most people, yep, right? Yep, and yep. now, instead of, instead of recognizing that the seat of power is not some building or not your fucking ego, but rather the will of the people, they've been like so uh, uh, brainwashed for so long with their, the smell of their own fucking farts, you know what I mean? Yeah. That they're just like, oh, yeah. this is all ours. We own, we, we own this, man. They're, they're fucking plebs, man. They're not coming up here. Right? No, no. They're so, not coming up here. They, these people are out of their goddamned minds. It's crazy. I'll, I'm, I'm just going to read you off the list here uh, for the five-day extravaganza for uh, the healing Have of you ever, America. You ever watch your kids doing something, right, and you know they're about to get hurt, and you're like, you know what, I should probably stop that, but this motherfucker's not going to learn if I stop him, and yeah. you just let it happen? That's how mm, I'm... I stop him. That's I, how, I stop him. If uh, it's a minor injury, I'm just saying. If they're about to pull like a book down on their own head, be like, no, nah, that's dumb. Yeah, that's, yeah, That's yeah. going to happen to you. And right now, that's kind of how I'm feeling. Yeah, well, you're, you're going to be feeling it all next week. Uh, Lady Gaga is belting out the national anthem. Good, she can come make fun of... Uh, Southern people again. Yeah. That'll help. Um, and that's going to be on the 20th. Uh, Bruce Springsteen is signed on. Oh, I thought the... he was going to Australia. No, he's not. I guess Trump won. Hey, everybody. Uh, ch- uh, my candidate won. Biden won, baby. Uh, I'm from the heart. I represent the working class. Me and my $600 million. I, yeah. he, that motherfucker hasn't shook another human being's <laughs> hand in 25 no, years. No, he's been rich since 73, yeah. dude. Fuck that he guy. He hasn't been doing no work since the 70s. No. Fuck no, dude. Hey, it's, it's for all my uh, hardworking people out there who are taking a metal lunchbox to work. <laughs> got a, a parrot on their shoulder going into those cold mines. This is uh, Born to Run. Uh, <laughs> celebrating America that, that will air on ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, and MSNBC all next week. Uh, the, uh, the boss will be joined by John Legend, uh, the Foo Fighters, which is kind of shocking. Um, Tom Hanks will be hosting. Eva Longoria will also be a co-host along with Kerry Washington. Um, and mm. then Biden and Harris are scheduled to give their remarks uh, of their own in the Celebrating of America um, event next week. And the finale for the five-day America United-themed mm. event. God, the fact that the, the fact that they're calling it America United, like, they're, they're, you, you're united because your candidate won? Like, you guys won the fucking House and Senate and everything? Like, yeah. now you're united? In 2016, mm. Nah, there's no, let's not unite anybody. Let's just create division. But now that our guys won, let's, let's unite it and go across every major network. Uh, you remember the, that? Uh, wait, hang on. Uh, Justin Timberlake, we'll, we'll do that uh, next week, along with uh, Demi Lovato, Aunt Clemens. Uh, and then there it is. I was waiting for JBJ, John Bon Jovi. Of course they were going to fucking pop out, you know, um, and do that. And then there's going to be more names added uh, during the next few days, along with the TV networks, Amazon Prime uh, will be telecasting all of this. Uh, Microsoft Bing, which um, if anybody does use Bing out there, lose my fucking number and stop yeah. being poor. Um, uh, <laughs> News Now, AT&T, DirecTV, and UVerse. So this will be it jammed in your face and on every possible screen for the next five days of We Won followed by a white heartfelt speech uh, that means nothing. They'll show many images of uh, black businesses being burned down over the summer and then how white people are going to save you. So um, good luck with that. You know? At least we don't lie to you. Dan and I aren't going to save you from shit. We can help you sell the song, but yeah. you know, us two honkies aren't going to fucking sell you know, help you from anything. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, go to the marinerapper.com and buy the song The Patriot today. But uh, when you do shit like this, just hearing this, um, just reading the article, this is the first time I read the entire article. I kind of breezed over it earlier yesterday, but um, God damn it, man. 75 million people voted for Trump, right? And now yep. they're going to watch this shit. All of these fucking artists and Tom Hanks and all these other fucking people, there's just going to be hatred for them now. Do they not understand you're just alienating half your audience for what you do? Um, Tom Hanks has already got his own bullshit going on, whether you believe it or not. But, uh, man, I, how tone deaf do you have to be to fucking do this shit right now? 
Yep. Well, you know, it's, I don't even think it's tone deaf. I think it's just they don't care, right? It's, it's to the point where they've been blatant. We won, you lose, and we're going to rub it in your face until you conform. And that's why I told people they're trying to sell us unity under the guise of conformity. It's not that they want us to come together and choose. They want us to, no, follow us, and then we can have peace. And I'm not falling for that, right? Because, once again, they're showing us they don't want peace. They're banning people, censoring people. Um, they will never give us a voice or platform. Uh, I, I love it because, you know, TikTok and other platforms, they actually started a Elevate Black Voices like fun. They're going to pick 100 black artists. Guess who is not getting the invite, even though one of the biggest <laughs> black artists on TikTok? Us. That's um, fucking crazy. So, yeah, it's, 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 I've, <laughs> I've learned that this path is going to be long, treacherous, and just hard work. And I've, I've accepted that. You know, I'm willing to die on this hill. And it is what it is. You know, um, I want to make sure I can serve a future for my children that looks like the one Martin Luther King talked about. You know, judge me based on my character versus my color. And that's what I want. You know, I'm tired of all this. Um, we need black representation. No, we don't need black representation. I don't think like that black person. I don't work like that black person or that white person or this person. It's look at what I'm doing and judge me based on my character and we good. And yeah. it's crazy because and you know how, you know how it goes, Ross. Like... The thing is, is we are doing everything independent. This is what we do 24 seven. You, you've seen me from the bottom come all the way to the top. They're trying to take away our income and take food out of our kids' mouth. You know what I'm saying? So it's like- Well, it's a common theme, there's right? There's another layer. There's like another layer to it. You know what I'm saying? There's like, yo, you said elevate, you said elevate black voices, black lives matter if you guys are liberal. Right, right. yeah. Right, I, fuck man. And it, look, the, we're friends with the Hodge twins as well. Uh, you know, they're going through it like back to your social media thing. Like, dude, I've followed you for years. Your post stopped showing up like maybe two months before the election. I, I didn't see anything yep. from you uh, until after the election ended. And then you, you pop back up on my feed again. Um, I yep. mean, it really is happening to people. <laughs> we, we wanted to have you guys on today to, to, you know, get it out to the 10 million listeners we have, obviously, and just be like, look, Dude, we promise this isn't like a fucking gimmick or a game. This is actually going on and they're banning people. And, and again, taking away your livelihood for shit that is, I mean, completely like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I would, uh, you know, in your anger right now to all of our listeners out there, and I assume most, if not all of you are angry about this bullshit. Uh, I would recommend really reflecting right now and preparing yourself for the potentiality that uh, at some point you're going to be on the other side of this argument and it's going to be your friends and party or whatever the fuck that's trying to pull some bullshit like this. Remember how fucking mad you feel right now mm -hmm. and make sure you don't make this same fucking mistake. Don't be a dick. If somebody has something to say that you disagree with, the only reason you, should, you would ever try to shut it up, psychologically speaking, is because you're afraid of what they have to say. You understand? Mm -hmm. That is right. not how we fucking do things here, man. We put the information out and collectively make the right decision. That's what a representative republic is supposed to be, right? Well, not only that, but you, you take the Marine Rapper, because last time you were on the show, uh, and for people who don't listen every single day, when you were on the show, you talked about voting for the best candidate and why. Um, you talked about voting for Obama uh, before, <laughs> right? And then you would yeah. change yeah. your mind and said, hey, man, all right, great. I want to do this and support this. You're one of those people who is just voting for the best candidate, which is probably is, is, what, is what it should be in America, right? Like, if there's candidates I don't like, even though I am a conservative, like, I wasn't crazy about George Bush. I didn't go out, I didn't go out and vote for him. Um, uh, with you personally, like, dude, there's no, you don't get any credit for that. Like, vote, like, you did vote for Obama, and then you voted for Trump. You're voting for the people uh, that you want to and that you actually believe in, and you're writing music about things that you believe in. What message does that send then to your kids and everyone else? It sends a message that it doesn't matter what you do, it still will never be good enough. <clears throat> yeah, because you, you have to believe how everybody else wants to believe. I, I, I look at this from a, a, a like a long game standpoint because I've, I've got kids. I got a two year old and a six year old, right? Yeah. When you have kids, what are you going to tell them about what dad did ten years ago, right? Um, what's the story that you tell your children? from this you know like 10 years from now like hey man this is what it's like in america and, and blah 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 like what do, what do you sit down and tell your kids in 10 years i'm going to tell them and show them that your dad stood up and fought for what he gave his life for six years um, in this country 
and that's to defend the Constitution from foreign and domestic enemies. And I made sure that I want to lead not just by my words, but by example. Um, if I don't preserve a future for my kids, then they're going to look back and say, Dad, what were you doing? I was like, mm. well, I was playing PS4 one zone, you know what I'm saying, just doing my own thing. <laughs> no, no, your your dad was banned because he was mm. making song that was unifying the country. That's the story they're going to be able to tell their friends and, and um, anybody they know. It's because their dad was there. He was on in the trenches. He was at the rallies. I've been to BLM and Trump rallies. Yep. So I've seen yep. firsthand how people operate. I know there's not there's bad apples in both bunches. Not everyone's evil and trying to destroy things. I know this. I've been there. Not everybody can say that because it's so polarized. But I've been there on the front lines, day in and day out, talking, trying to express myself, trying to wake people up, trying to show you that you have more power as the individual than you're trying to make as a collective. And even if you're trying to make it as a collective, they're 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 more more than likely going to run you over when when the power is in their um in their favor. Um, like we're saying right now, uh, you know, the Biden administration has talked to everybody except BLM, even though they rolled yeah. off the back of BLM. Just just to put that out there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Go to BLM's page. It actually says you have not answered our calls and our emails. Yeah, yeah. it's it on their page. Yeah, to uh, your to your point, Ross. Uh, FDR said uh, that we can't always build a future for our children, but we can always build our children for the future. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Meaning we have to prepare those motherfuckers for what's to come. I mean, th there has to be, and it's something we lost. And I think it's what it. I think it's what Jefferson really meant when he said that the tree of liberty needed to be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Uh, he, he meant that the conflict is something very important to the process, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's why these, there, there's a couple of things you can glean from that. If it is the most important thing, and, and it seems to be according to our founders uh, uh, and obviously in practice, it, there's a couple of things you can glean from that. One is that the process itself has to be unadulterated. You cannot fuck with that. You can't have Fox News and CNN. You can't, that can't exist in our world if it's going to be a good world. You can't have social media companies and Amazon Web Services banning dissenting thought. You just cannot have that shit, right? right. It's not about, it, it, that, that, is the, that is the red line that if they cross, there's a fucking problem. And they've crossed it and, you know, a, at least a third of the country is on board with it, right? So now we've got a real problem. And uh, I don't know what the future looks like at this point. I don't know if, if this collapses i think uh, to be honest this is kind of coarse but uh, an outright collapse would probably be better in the same way yeah, i make this analogy all the time <clears throat> and it I, i'm always right about it too your fucking buddy up in michigan because of the way this season went and because he had modicums of success the previous two even though he lost all the big games yeah gets a contract extension jim harbaugh yeah he did just enough to stay there and we're gonna fail collectively just enough or, or not not quite enough to blow the whole thing up, right, and start with a clean slate. We're just going to keep descending into this bullshit. And I'll tell you, if you think about your, let, let's just say your level of anger. Let's say this is a five, right, ten, one. If you hang out at three, it's pretty hard to get you to ten. Right. But if you hang out at five or six or seven, any little thing is going to set you off. And we're getting down to the point that we're, you know, right down here uh, with our, 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 governance and it's going to take less and less over time to completely fuck our system up right yep. the further we get away from or the farther rather we get away from what we're supposed to be no one seems to see this warning signs even though this has happened to country after country after country so again right now i'm feeling like that parent and i'm watching the kid pull something off the shelf and it's probably going to hit him in the head and i'm like what is my responsibility here yeah right uh, I, so it, it, me as a parent, and the reason why I was, I was bringing that up with you is uh, that is the thing I've struggled with the most out of all of this, because I don't want to tell them, um, hey, man, Trump is awesome. Trump, you know, that's the best president. And if we lose, the country's fucked and all that other shit. Like, uh, I don't tell them Biden is a bad person. I don't I, I don't tell them anything about politics or anything that's going on because they're children. They're like two and yeah. six. I think if you start that at a young age. It's fucking dangerous growing up and you're creating some little fucking, you know, far right or far left kid or whatever. Like I try to 
nothing like I, I have a feeling in 10 years when I go back and watch all this shit well it will probably be pulled off of YouTube whatever the next <laughs> thing is you know um, taterdick.com or whatever it's gonna be uh, when they go to Tater Dick and start looking at old videos they'll be like ah oh, shit man you talked a lot about politics or whatever you didn't I didn't hear any of that growing up because I, I think that is important um, and that's why I bring up the 10 years thing because uh, you, you were gonna look back at this time and how volatile it was and like hopefully it will have gotten better but I don't know that it will. Um, and I still think we have a, a responsibility as parents out there to kind of shelter them away from all of the negativity and everything that's going on right now, or else you're just gonna create kids who are stuck in the same shit that's going on today. Even more so, they're gonna have more anger and they're gonna be more amped up about things because they don't know any better, right? So they never saw uh, mm -hmm. both sides of, of the coin on, on any of this shit. So. It's really hard though, man. You come home from work or you come home from being banned and whatever you do and you're just like, hey, Julie, you want to turn off the TV and just go fucking play catch? Or yeah, it's, it's like, uh, th this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like uh, replacing the Walmart greeter with a guy who just stands up there and if you're fat and don't have shoes on or don't have a shirt on and your hair is mussed up, they don't let you in. Yeah. Well, you just killed your entire clientele there, buddy, because <laughs> everybody that's in Walmart past 10 p.m., it's a fucking circus in there. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I, I, go, I go in there sometimes with a tripod and a camera, yeah. and I just set it up and sit there for four hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyways, I mean, th this is the principle here. You know, they know that uh, about 46 to 48 percent of the country is conservative, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 43 percent of which are, are pretty conservative, right? Right, right. Uh, and if you're a company and you're, you're like, you know what your total addressable market is, right? You're yeah. not, you're not you're the total number of people that you could possibly reach with your product that would in some way align with your product. And then you're trying to get one to 3% of those people typically in politics, you need 50.1% to win. Right. Yeah. So this is not, this is, this isn't, it, it's not a, it's not a product. No. It's the will of the people being exercised. So your product is the will, or your, your service is to uh, uh, suffice the will of the people, right? Now, you can't do that if you, uh, if you discard 43%. Yep. Like, that makes the math impossible at some point, particularly when, in this election, black and brown people voted for conservative politicians at a historic level, mm -hmm. right? Which does kind of still seem weird. Seems a little weird that the election ended up the way it did. Yeah, that yeah, way. I, That's yeah. The, that, that was the one thing that was weird to me. Like, how the fuck do you get more? It has been the case in electoral <laughs> politics since the 1960s. If you can get black people to vote, the Democratic Party will win, period. Yeah. Every single time. And, I mean, things do change. There's no question about that. So we'll see in a couple of years what the next votes look like. But that one was pretty weird to me. Did that seem yeah. weird to you guys? Very. Yeah. Yeah, and when you get more, so he won last time in 2016 with less minority representation. Way but less. Lost, yeah. But he lost this time with more. Yeah, which means apparently white people know better what's best for black people than black people know what's best for black people. And that is the type of attitude that turns this into the fucking Hunger Games, right? Yeah. Like the capital people are over here with their fucking Gavin Newsom hair and teeth telling you what to do right well you we, you guys need to get out to work and produce our stuff for us you yeah. know what i mean come on i'm gonna go get some tattoos and nipple rings like cuomo yeah uh and then all of a sudden i mean it's this is nothing i, I i've talked about this a million times on this show people will not tolerate that shit and that's the issue that we have um especially with you know, uh, a lot of the democrats a lot of the left side they want to tell us what's good for us it's like what like why are you how, like we're trying to get off of that type of plantation mentality yeah. We want to work. We want to do work. You mm. know what I mean? I've never tried to ask, you know, even when I met you, I didn't ask for no handouts. I'll work, I'll work for it. I'll send you the song, you know, back in the day, Ross. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've always wanted to work. I've always wanted to work for it. And then you have a liberal trying to tell another white person how they should be treating us. Like, no, I can speak for myself. We can speak for ourselves. Like, I, that's mm. a, my number one pet peeve. It's just like, they're always telling us what's good for us. Mm. How do you know what's good for us? You don't even know what's good for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite. I know. That's my favorite, too. And, uh, you know, on the topic of racism, like, dude, Dan and I travel, well, pre-pandemic, uh, all, all over the country. You know, we're typically doing uh, live shows for all these games every two to three weeks all over the country. 
I don't see a lot of racism, but also I am, I am white. Um, and I've been to, fuck, we've been literally everywhere all over this goddamn country. Do you guys see it when you, when you go out? Is it as bad as the media says it is every single day? No, 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 nowhere near. Uh, I just don't I was, feel like I know anybody that thinks that way anymore. Maybe, no, maybe uh, older people and stuff like that, but yeah, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't run into a person in my general age group in fucking years yeah. that yeah. I felt like was truly had some fucked up thinking. I mean, people have, people don't know about the history of this country, right? Yeah. People are fucking kind of dumb. They don't know that a trillion dollars is robbed out of the black community through not paying for uh, wages and slavery. And they know that gen, they know about, they don't know about Jim Crow and its real effects like the GI bill that built the middle class in this country it was technically available to black people, but they could only go to fucking HBCUs, yeah. right? They weren't yeah. allowed to go to any other college. So there was a 15 year fucking period before the civil rights act, before Brown v. Board, where they were in limbo. So all these benefits that technically existed were unusable. People don't know that stuff, right? That's, that's a level of ignorance that will inform them uh, uh, incorrectly to make, uh, 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 to make conclusions about uh, crime and poverty and things like that, right? That's, uh, that is something. That's not racism. That's just, stu that's just stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's what they've been feeding off of. They've been feeding off of us being dependent on them. Yeah. That's exactly what they've been doing. They want us to not know. They want us to be ignorant. They want us to not be educated. They want us to not research. And so that's why they're blocking this education right. from us, that's why they're blocking the history from us. And yeah, like, you know, to your point earlier, I mean, there's been onesies and twosies. Yeah, I've been called the N-word here and there, like from people in the South and stuff like that. But that's like very rare. Like rare. To, these days, like, no, like most I think the most hospitable people have been to me was in Texas, where I thought, you know, when I was stationed in Texas, I was like, oh man, I'm going into like racist territory. Man, this cop helped me help me get off the road when I broke down on the side of the road, made sure I had gas, made sure I was good and everything. There's people who invited me in their house. They barely knew me for dinner and everything. So like, like this narrative that they're pushing that, you know, all white people were racist or the white person is bad and this and that, it's just not true. Like, right? yeah, there's just, the fact of the matter is there's bad people, you know, there's racist black people, there's racist brown people, there's, you know, all of that. It's just, it's either you're a good person or you're a bad person and they need to stop marginalizing and, and stop taking real estate on the black community. You like, how do you know anything about black culture? And that's why, that's why it bugged me so much when Joe Biden said, you ain't black, you know, I dissed him and, you know, I, I kind of like put it simply, but the fact of the matter is it bothered me because if you say I'm not black, you're saying F your culture. We don't care about your culture. I'm going to tell you what your culture is. You have to vote for me because you worked at a swimming pool and you had some black kids play with your leg hair. Like, no, mm -hmm. you don't know nothing about black being black. You don't, you don't know nothing about being black. So it's yeah. just like, that's why I was so bothersome. So I don't want nobody else thinking for me and telling me what I need to do. I don't want no handouts. I want to work for it. But when you're stopping us from getting this money, that's when we have a problem. Yeah. Stopping us from saying what we want to say, that's when we have a problem. So we, we're staying educated, we're staying smart, we're reinvesting and we're putting, and we're really showing that Black Lives Matter because we are we have people actually giving us money because we're earning it, you mm. know what I mean? Right. In exchange. All, all Black I mean, Lives I Matter. Don't like, I don't like handouts. I've never been taught handouts. Even when, you know, uh, when I grew up, I grew up off of Section 8 government cheese and stuff because my, my mom was a single mom, but she said, hey, I need to be on this program that the government put up so I can get on my feet. She got on her feet, she got a job, she encouraged everybody else to get a job. And then now my brother's a doctor down there, but UT, he's, he's right next to Matthew McConaughey. Um, you know, we're making money on our own and stuff now independently every day off of music. Um, even more money now because they wanted to take all of our, uh, all of our music off. So you just created a monster. So you, uh, it's like you guys were getting 30%. Now you're getting nothing. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And again, go to the marine and purchase the profit to, to support these guys. Topher, uh, real quick, I, I'd love to know about your background. Um, I know you served in the military. What branch and, uh, and how long were you in for? I was Air Force, six years active duty. I was a cryptologic language analyst. I worked joint task force missions with NSA down in Fort Gordon. Mm. Um, and I pretty much stayed there my entire career. I did not get a chance to deploy because we were considered the Deployed on site, so we intel folks, the smart people, can go nowhere. Put it like that. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the same way it is for all the drone pilots up at Creech in Vegas. Their deployments are to a fucking uh, Connex shed in North Vegas. Really? It sucks, man. It's sitting there and fucking smell your own farts all day. Ugh, shit. Uh, this is the point mm -hmm. in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today, uh, who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to, each of you? 
Uh, Topher, you go first. Uh, um, I would have to uh, go out and say my first. Um, I had to give a man. That's that's tough. Wow. Um, like recently, man. It doesn't I, have to be like, recently. Like your whole life. Yeah, it could be your your whole anyone. Yeah. yeah. My whole life. Uh, we just made it, we just made it harder because now I, he has to think about it all thirty dude, years. Do I, can I give it to my mom? Yeah, yeah, you whoever you want. Absolutely, absolutely. It, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I give it to my mom. Um, it will be a year since she passed here. Next couple of days, she had a uh, glioblastoma stage four, the most deadly form of brain cancer. <laughs> and um, so I would love to give a drink to her. I wish she could be here. To see. She supported me, my music way before you know when I was sucky. You know, as 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 a uh, as he was saying, watching the book fall on my head. You know, mm. she. <laughs> She's allowed me to uh, do those things and learn from my mistakes, but she always encouraged me to be myself and, you know, and just go out here and conquer the world. So I would like to give a drink to my mom. Uh, how about you, Marine Rapper? And I would make, and I would like to make a toast. Let me just say a group, my family, uh, because specifically, no matter what, we're in a group chat and everything, but no matter what, whether you're number one or on the bottom underground rapper freestyle, uh, my mom's like, I've always believed you're number one, so it really doesn't matter. I've already awarded you that. So you're number one. The family thinks you're number one, so don't worry about it. And it's good to have a family in your corner and having your back no matter what. Awesome. Awesome. Well, cheers, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate you being here today. And again, please go out and support these guys if you're, you're at home listening right now or watching on YouTube. Uh, go to themarinerapper.com and purchase the song, The Prophets. Uh, I would, I would imagine the Patriot, uh, the Patriot. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Um, just but, Patriot actually. Yeah. The Patriots. Um, but, uh, I, I would imagine all of the profits go to you is where I was going with yeah. that. Right. Yeah. And there's no middlemen anymore. No, 100% goes to us. We split it up amongst the people who produce the song. And then when you buy the signed copy of our CD, we both sign it by hand. So we're going to make sure we uh, get those out to people as well. So it's, we have those different options up there. So hundred percent goes to us. And that 100% of money we're going to use to reinvest in ourselves and do our own thing because they, don't, they won't let us do our thing. That's awesome. Again, support them uh, at themarinerapper.com and, uh, and pick up the Patriots because uh, you guys are two of the nicest people on earth. And again, you have a, a great message of, of positivity, which is rare these days. And to see what you're going through right now is truly fucking heartbreaking uh but thanks for taking time out of your day i know you, you guys are slammed um uh with everything that's going on around you we, we greatly appreciate it uh for toper toper the uh, marine rapper and d'anthony d'anthony holloway i'm ross patterson this is the drinking bros good night everyone good night good night